Hi jazz nerds around the globe, Sandra Sherman here, greetings from Austria. You guys keep asking me what jazz gear I use and recommend. Well today I'm gonna show you what gear I use and I'm gonna recommend you some jazz guitars and teach you how to get a great jazz guitar tone. Alright, let's dig right in. Alright, let's start with this beauty. This is my main jazz guitar and it's not a Gibson ES175 uh, as many of you seem to believe. It is actually a Gibson Howard Roberts Fusion, the first one. They have out, uh, they built three different ones. So this is the first one. I bought it in 1996 when Gibson actually used to build uh, quality guitars for an affordable price. I paid around 1300 euros, that equals around 1500 bucks, dollars. Um, I love it because it has the perfect size for me. It's only about 15 and a half or 16 inch radius body. It is thinner than a 175, but it is thicker, wider, than those small 335s, which I don't actually like that much. So it has the perfect size for me. What I love about it also is of course it's super duper mellow sound. So um, I guess you guys know that sound already from my other videos. My amp really doesn't have to do a lot here anymore. These guitars are not being produced anymore. They are discontinued. Uh, the Howard Roberts uh, came out in, in uh, 1, 2 and 3. I think 3 was the latest one they had, the last one they had out. So if you find a used Fusion 3 or 2 maybe, those are sold sometimes, grab them because they are really cheap even if they are old. I mean this guitar is like 20 two years old now and it's it works like a charm I never have to do anything a little adjustment once in a while but that's it and so don't he hesitate to buy one of these all right and here's another jazz guitar that I use sometimes this is a really beautiful guitar it's an arch top it's my Eastman 905 and I think it's really a beautiful guitar but it's kind of hard to play first of all it doesn't have access to the real high frets and the fretboard is fatter the uh, scale length is a little longer, it's a 25, while the Gibson is a 24.75, which my small fingers, you know, I, I can feel that. The sound is, is awesome when it's played acoustically. When I play it over an amp, I like the other one better. It's a little harder to play and it's fatter and it has a 17 inch body if you want to hear the two of them in comparison you can listen to my other video where I uh, explain the difference between arch tops guitars this is the arch top and um, semi acoustic guitars all right that's it for my jazz guitars As for jazz strings, a lot of people keep asking me what jazz strings I use. I use Tomastic Infeld jazz strings exclusively because I think they are the best. I always use them, had uh, other strings on my guitar only accidentally when my luthier uh, restrung my guitar with uh, different strings and I didn't like them at all. 
So I go with Tomas de Ginfeld. They are Austrian strings, but you can get them worldwide. Uh, George Benson plays them. Many great players play them. On my regular jazz guitar, the uh, semi-acoustic, the Gibson one, I play... I play the Tomas de Bebops, which are round wound strings. Here you go. And I play gauge 12. All right. So um, they are regular round wound strings, but specifically made for jazz players. So they have that smooth and mellow tone. I just love it. And for my uh, Eastman guitar, that uh, arch top guitar, I play the uh, swing series, which are flat wound strings, also from Tomastic. And I play gauge uh, 12 here as well. And um, I actually don't like uh, flat wound strings. I have them on this guitar because I want a different sound, okay? Flat wounds tend to have a lack of sustain because they're swing, like, I mean, the strings are called swing series. They are meant to be played for swing stuff where you change the chords very, very often, like every quarter note, like this. Let's see. Then you don't need a lot of sustain because, I mean, the next chord is on its way a couple milliseconds after. So, um, and the advantage of the flat wounds is that they have no, uh, they don't produce much noise, okay, because they're flat wound. Okay, so they are not as scratchy as uh, the regular wounds. Okay, so you when shift from one to another chord, then you don't get all this scratchy noise, all right? But else than that, if you don't play swing all the time, those quarter notes, but if you play regular jazz and have your tones ringing longer, I would recommend to play regular jazz strings, round wound strings, whatever brand you choose, but round wound, all right. So which jazz guitars would I recommend for an affordable price for beginner to intermediate? Well, um, the Epiphone Sheridan 2 Pro, I think it's called. Uh, a couple students have, him, have it and it sounds really good. It's actually a thin guitar. It's built like a Gibson ES335. And you know I'm not a fan of those thin guitars, but the Sheridan sounds really awesome. I'm not exactly sure about the uh, two model because my students have the first model, but uh, I think it should be just a little improvement and that's it. Um, this guitar is very versatile too. It has coil splitting so the humbuckers can be split into single coils. So if you don't exclusively play jazz, you can also have a poppy funky and bluesy sound too with those single coils thin out the uh, fat humbucker a bit. That's good once in a while. And it has a really good jazz tone, very, very buttery. That's what I, I don't know if that's a word even, but I call it buttery. It sounds like butter, very mellow, smooth. It's, uh, this is really a good guitar for, I think an affordable price. Uh, I think it's around $700. Yeah, I think like something like that. Another great guitar I can recommend is the uh, Ibanez GSM-10. That's the uh, one of the John Schofield signature guitars. It is super easy to play. It is a thin uh, guitar again, like uh, 335 style. It has Super 58 humbuckers in there. They sound really nice. It's also very versatile and I think it's around 1100 Maybe you find a cheaper one, $1,100. As for arch tops, I can recommend the Epiphone Emperor 2 Joe Pass model. I wasn't actually a fan of the first model, but they improved it a lot. The pickups are better now, 
and uh, it went down from a size 17 body to a 16 inch body which makes it a lot easier to handle. The sound improved and it's a super duper good price. It is, uh, I think it's 600, I always have to think in dollars, I think it was a 660 I saw last time, 660 dollars. So um, this guitar is really good in the second version. As for the first version, mm, I cannot really recommend that one. The second arch top I can recommend to you is the Ibanez uh, LGB30 George Benson Signature. I have a couple students who have this guitar and it's awesome. It's around $1100 uh, dollars and it's super playable for an arch top. Arch tops are usually really hard to play but this one is great. I think it has a 16 inch body but I'm not sure. It, it is similar to my uh, Gibson Howard Roberts Fusion. It's just a little wider and it has a super mellow George Benson sound so if you like that it has uh, two Super 58 custom humbuckers. That's where that great sound comes from along with the, uh, the woods and the size and everything. So uh, great guitar for that money. One last thing, make sure your jazz guitar is not a rockabilly guitar with a Bixby tremolo on. Oh no, <laughs> we don't want that. Um, if you have it already, it's okay. It's not, th those are not bad guitars. They're actually pretty good guitars for rockabilly, country, rock and roll, whatever. Not particularly for jazz. I mean, they look similar to jazz guitar, but they have completely different pickups, sometimes fat single coils, P90s or those scratch pickups. They have a very unique uh, sound, kind of a hollow sound. They kind of lack mids, around 500 hearts, something like that. And But the thing is the tremolo. Don't get guitars, jazz guitars, with tremolos, okay? The Bixby thing, the tremolo whammy bar, like on electric guitars. These guitars get out of tune all the freaking time and you don't use a tremolo on uh, jazz guitars anyway. So if you have it, keep it. Maybe you uh, have some money and get a new one some someday, but don't get and buy a new... Um, Gretsch guitar, Duesenberg guitars with those uh, whammy bars. They are rockabilly guitars. I use two different kind of amps for my jazz guitar sounds. One is a tube amp and one is an acoustic amp. I'll tell you about that one in a minute. The uh, tube amp is a Fender Blues Junior 3 in a beautiful candy apple red. And um, I had it modded. So um, it doesn't distort as early because that Blues Junior is only a 15 watt single channel amp, amp and it uh, kind of distorts very early. So we don't want that in jazz. So I had it modded, uh, uh, that's the Bill M mod. You can buy sets and have it built in or built in yourself. And um, so the bias is reduced, it doesn't distort as early, and I have different tubes in uh, that give me more headroom, etc, etc. So what is this thing about tube amps? Why does everybody like tube amps so much? Well, they have that warm, great sound because of the tubes. The thing with tubes is they sound warm and great only when you kind of crank them up when they give them some, some heat and they start glowing and then they get, they get warm and the sound gets warm too. All right, but um, if you crank up a, 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 a tube amp, you start distorting it. We don't want that in jazz. So um, there's only one or two ways around it. One is modding a low wattage amp and the other one is buying a big wattage amp. Uh, so you kind of buy a 60 watt tube amp or a 100 watt tube amp. That means they have a lot of headroom and don't distort that early. There is, There are actually two amps from Fender out by uh, George B. 
Benson, and that's those are jazz guitar, jazz guitar amps, and they are modded also. I think one is the Fender Twin. That's a really big one. I think 100 watts, and the other one is a smaller one, but I'm not sure about that one. Blues Deluxe or or Reverb Deluxe or something like that. And um, but they both have in common that they uh, start distorting later. So those are uh, great amps, check them out. The other thing that a lot of jazz guitarists do is we use uh, acoustic amps. Acoustic amps are not tube amps, they're actually transistor amps. And I use an AER six, uh, Compact 60. That's a German company, also sold worldwide. And they are the acoustic people. And this is a kind of an insider tip, you know, um, because acoustic amps tend to not change the sound. You need a good guitar for, a, uh, for playing a jazz guitar uh, into an acoustic amp. Uh, because what goes in comes out, <laughs> you know. What, I once had a gig and I, all my EQ section was turned, you know, completely different. I forgot to adjust it correctly. It didn't make any difference because it's it's very subtle, you know, that EQ section. So uh, what comes in goes out. If your guitar sucks or, or your playing sucks because a lot of tone is in your fingers, right? You can have the best equipment. If you just dig in really hard, it won't sound smooth and mellow. And um, so have a great guitar, then an acoustic amp might be the thing for you. It lacks a little of that warmth that tube amps have, but it's very clear and it doesn't distort at all. That's why we prefer it usually. And uh, very clear, but sometimes, you know, recently it got too clear for me, too, you know, like in a hospital, everything is uh, super duper clean. Um, recently I preferred my tube amp over the AER. For my YouTube guitar tutorials, I don't use an amp at all. It would be too complicated to put a mic in front of the cabinet each time. So I use a computer software plug-in and it's called uh, Scofam Amps Escure 2. It emulates uh, amps, amps uh, like Fender, Marshall, etc. And I'm gonna show you with one of those emulations how to get a great amp sound and a great jazz tone. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I loaded the uh, Custom 57 emulation now from the Scuff M amp. And this looks exactly or almost exactly like a 57 Fender Tweed amp, a tube amp. Very simple, simple, very minimalistic. Okay, let's look at what I did with the EQ. I roll back the bright frequencies a bit, but just a bit, and I boosted the bass a bit. Okay, let's listen how what it sounds like. That's my standard jazz sound. When uh, this is what you hear when you uh, listen or watch my uh, tutorial videos. This is my go-to sound. If I roll back the bright frequencies too much. too dark for me. I like it a little brighter. Don't make that common mistake that beginners make to roll back uh, the tone of your guitar totally. If you want to roll it back then because it it's too bright, first of all we make a sound uh, on the amp. Roll back the high frequencies on your amp. And then if it's still too too bright for you, then roll them back a bit. But actually we want to turn everything, every knob on on our guitar. So the amp receives the full signal, a clear, full, good signal. And then if you made your amp sound, then you still can turn back. You may want to roll back uh, those high frequencies a bit. But don't roll them back totally, because that just sounds... Uh, mm, mm, mm. There, there is no presence anymore, okay? So, um, 
the bass I boosted. That depends on the amp though, the bass thing, okay? If I do it too much, it might be a little too fat if I roll it all off. There is no bass anymore. That's like pop sound. So just a little bit goes a long way here. Now a very important thing, that level doesn't matter right now because that's in, the, in a plug-in that doesn't really do much. It's just the overall level. But that volume is very, very important and that's the most common mistake besides rolling back your guitar tone that I find with beginners. Even, even advanced players sometimes uh, can't handle uh, amp correctly. Volume or in um, some amp it's called gain, in a lot of amps actually. But this is a single channel amp and thus it's called volume. Uh, a lot of people turn that volume way down and try to get a clean, in order to get a clean sound. Well, yes, you get a clean sound, but what you get is kind of a very sterile sound. It's, it's too clean. So we want to crank this volume or gain up as much as possible until it starts overdriving, distorting. So hit those when you make a sound check or you adjust your tone. Play really loudly. Hit those strings. And as long as it doesn't distort, crank it up even further. See, still, still way to go. I'm gonna turn back the level though a bit now, otherwise we have a digital distortion, which wouldn't be good. And you hear now the overdrive sets in. So that's the break point. It's around, what is it, five? And we don't want that. That's too much. But we need to crank that volume to get that warm tube sound. That's what I told you before. So let's roll it back a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's what I would choose. Where are we? Four. Between three and four. I had it rolled back a lot more though. That's because for my video lessons I want to make sure that I do not have the slightest distortion because then the video would be ruined. So this is an extra headroom for me. But uh, usually I would crank it up to between three and four. This is just before the breakup point. And then uh, your tubes get driven really nicely, they get saturated, they get that warm, you get that warm tube sound. And also the EQ section works better then, okay? It's more effective then. So that's my way to go sound. Bright, a little back, basses, a little up. I don't have a middle here. If you have a middle, crank it up a bit because uh, mids is where jazz is going on, it's, uh, it's, it's where jazz happening. Um, crank them up a bit uh, like it, between 0 and 10, I would maybe crank them up to 7, but that depends of course on, to, on your amp. But don't roll them back, the mids are very important in jazz. So if you have mids, uh, boost them around 7, maybe even higher. But then sometimes uh, the bass is affected too, then you might want to have to pull uh, back, roll back that bass sound a bit. Sometimes even the bright or the, some amps have a presense. That presense, I love presense because it gives you that uh, sound that uh, really cuts through the mix so you hear it. A lot of jazz guitarists have that, I still don't find the correct word in English for it. Um, have that kind of, uh, uh, I call it the German word, okay, muddy sound, you know, where, where it's not clear and a little bright, but it's all dark and okay, so um, I don't want that, I hate that actually, so presence is a good thing, but if you, if you boost them too much, it gets kind of harsh, so you need to take care about those uh, high mid frequencies called presence. All right, but the most important thing for me is not the EQ, it's that gain or volume boosted until it cracks up uh, and until it breaks up 
and then roll it back a bit, okay? So to have a little headroom. And don't roll back that tone pot, please. All right, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, put them in the comment section of below. I try to answer them all. And please let me know what gear you use. All right, I see you next time. Arrivederci, ciao, ciao, tschüss.